Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to another live video. And this is the first one for 2023. And let me just go ahead and get set up here. And of course, we have people coming on from time to time, coming on and going off. But let me just start off first by saying thank you so much for having supported my channel for 2022. It truly was a pleasure having you, and I so appreciated you all. And I did a live, um, not a live, I did a video with a summary of 2022. So I hope you are able to see it. If not, be sure to go ahead and catch it. And if this is your first time here, my name is Marlene. This is Marlene's How To's, my home and garden channel, and I am so glad to have you. So um, Christmas basically has passed. And right now, you know, we are in the process of taking decorations down. And I'm not sure for you, but for me personally, whenever I have to go in and I have to take the decorations down, it always leaves some a little bit of sadness, you know, because I'm just like, oh, no, you know, the Christmas is over. And then I start feeling a little bit blue because I love when things are in bloom, as you can tell. I mean, I'm from Jamaica. You know, I like to have my flower here and, you know, my tropical settings and all of that. I absolutely love that. So, you know, when I have to take everything down and it's kind of like cold and gray outside, then it's like, I'm just like, oh man, you know, it's, you know, it feels a little sad. You feel a little blue sometimes. So, you know, we'll do things that we can to help to cheer ourselves up. So in today's live, we're going to go over some of those things that we can do. So let me first go ahead and take a look at the chat and see who we have here so far. And guys, if you haven't used the live chat, you know, you can feel free to just go to live chat and you can always say hello. So I can make mention of you and, um, you know, just show extra appreciation. And you can even, you know, have a little, you know, um, talk with each other on the chat as well, too, because that happens sometimes. So, so far we have two Georgia Peaches. She said hi from two Georgia Peaches. Hi, two Georgia Peaches. That's Drea. So glad to see you. Happy New Year. And we have Bruce Lee. He says, hi, Miss Marlene. Happy New Year. Getting Christmas decorations packed away. Yes, many of us are doing that. And uh, I tell you, it's tiring because what we did was the first um, on New Year's Day, we actually did took up everything that was outside to just make at least the outside look OK. So it looks like, you know, Christmas is over. We're not doing anything else. Um, in that regard and just switch those things out on there. But as far as inside goes, guys, I'm still working on it. We took the decorations down off of my tree, but the tree is still up and we're slowly packing our stuff away. So let me take a look over here. I see Jared says, I'll be at work, unfortunately, unfortunately doing this live, but I hope it goes well. God bless you all. Oh, thank you so much for stopping in. You can stay for as long as you can. And if you have to go, you can always come on back in and join us. We're more than happy to have you. We so appreciate you. So now we're going to take a look at ways that we can cheer ourselves up, you know, in this time when we're going through all of these, the doldrums, as we call it, you know, just to feel a little more lively and also to take a look at goal settings for the year, because that's a very important part of January. You know, you kind of have to set something in place, you know, even just general things. So you have an idea of what you plan to do and, you know, just see how you put those plans in place. All right, so we have Meet the Johnson crew. Welcome, welcome. Good evening to you and Happy New Year. So glad you could join us. So we're going over, you know, ways you can get over the after Christmas blues, you know, because we have all of the decorations that we've taken down and everything to me just looks kind of beer now and not as spruce. I mean, you know, all spruced up and all of that that we enjoyed for Christmas. So, of course, you know, there's that, that you know, we just need to get that push to keep going and go forward. So we're going to look at a few things, like I said, you know, to um, see how we can help with that. So the first thing, and especially for the ladies involved, would be to start with your decorations, um, decorating your space, you know, freshening up your space for the new year, just to get a new feel, you know, about everything. And meet the Johnson crew, you could tell me, you know, like what you've done for the new year so far, if anything, as far as your decorations. Because um, I know, um, Mondell, you're there. You're coming over also from the um, um, Johnson Home Decor. With a lot of decorating and so on and you had a wonderful year um in you know in 2022 especially december with all of those wonderful decorations so i'd love to know what you do at this point you know as far as you know getting getting your um your things set up you know to just refresh your space and have everything looking good and you know be all ready to go so of course you know you have to make sure that you kind of get things organized in the sense where you have certain things that you put away as um, things that you will need again next year 
There's some things you may want to put away that you donate them and some things you may just have to trash them, just depending on what they are. Because like some of the outdoor stuff, if you buy them, you know, you'll tend to see that um, some of them, you know, they're not waterproof as much and they start to, you know, get puffy or swollen or somebody may get discolored or whatever. So, of course, you want to trash those, you know, put those out on your bulk day and then just go ahead and start refreshing. So I just love to see some of the things that you guys do, you know, to, you know, freshen up your space. Like for me personally, um, I like to go with like, you know, like lighter shades as far as giving that winter theme. If you're in a more tropical setting like Jamaica, Florida and so on, and of course, you, you can just go straight for your usual colors and it, you know, it's okay. But you know, if it's really cold outside, it's kind of odd to have, you know, like summer like stuff. Well, what I do recommend though, is you can do a part of your house, maybe like your bathroom, with a nice backdrop like the one I have behind me, just to give you that nice, lively, you know, island feeling. You know, as you can see, I have my little, like I said, I have my little flower in here, you know, to give me that feeling, you know, that lift, lift your spirits. So, you know, you can decorate a part of your space and you just put in some nice, you know, tropical decor in that little maybe bathroom, a powder room, or just something to lift your spirits and get you out of that kind of like cold, gray, you know, kind of um, January feeling or even February um, sometimes. So we freshen up the areas, do backdrops and so on. Then, of course, the next thing is that we talk about like New Year's resolutions. Some people don't like to talk about it because they say, you know, you have a New Year resolution. And as soon as maybe two weeks pass, you know, you stop doing it, you don't do it anymore. But at least try, you know, because sometimes you may do it and you fall off and you pick back up again somewhere in the year. But, you know, just lay out some things and just say, you know, I hope to do this. I plan to do this, you know, and set some goals in place, maybe like some milestones, maybe by, you know, week, month one, you're here, month two, you're there. And don't, you know, be easy on yourself. You know, don't, don't be too hard on yourself. So it, you get discouraged and you don't want to continue doing it. And, you know, like somebody who you trust, who's a good friend or family or whatever, you can let them know what it is and they can sometimes help to spur you along to get that goal going. So I see Johnson Home Decor says, I'm still packing away. I'm under the weather. Oh, no. So it's taking longer than usual for me. Oh, no. I'm so sorry to hear that. I hope you feel better soon. If it is like a cold or something, then there's always, um, you can always maybe try like some hot lemon tea, you know, just to help you at night before you go to bed and see if that helps you because it usually helps me to get over it a little bit quicker if it's kind of like something that's cold related. So I would say, you know, attainable goals. You know, you want to have some that you feel that you most likely will be able to accomplish these or get close to them. And you can also set yourself maybe a few stretch goals as well. So maybe I can get a little further and I could do this. So there are things like that, you know, but you have to know, you know, what you have working with, you know, and where you're trying to get to and just see how all of that goes. Pretty things, home decor and lifestyle. Hello, hello, hello. And welcome. She says, Hi, just getting on for getting in for the evening. Hope you're doing well. Thank you so much. And happy new year to you, my dear. I saw one of your lovely videos today with all of those wonderful things. We were just talking about decorating your space, you know, as to give yourself a lift out of the after Christmas winter blues. So like how you did those, you know, and you went shopping and you saw all of those nice things or even just eye shopping sometimes to give yourself an idea of the wonderful decor items, you know, that are out there you know, just to freshen your space, just change a few things here or there. And it makes such a big difference. And like I was saying, you can even maybe decorate, maybe like your, you know, maybe like a bathroom or something in your tropical, in a tropical theme or a powder room, just to give you that feeling that you're kind of like, okay, I'm not down in the doldrums of all of this grayness and everything. We also have Deborah Cabasa Home Living saying, hi, everyone. Hello, Deborah. Happy New Year. And I just wanted to pause for a moment to give these ladies a shout out because they are actually um, fellow YouTube creators, we have two Georgia Peaches. She's a new channel. She does wonderful earrings. So you guys can just make a note of her channel and check her out when you get a chance. We have Johnson Home Decor. She does a lot of wonderful decorating. Had an awesome December with all of her wonderful decorating that she did at home. We have Pretty Things. She does a lot of shopping hauls and decorates her space. She did a really nice one of her bathroom. I think it was a snowflake wreath that she did. And it was so, so beautiful. I just loved it. I said, you know what? I'm going to do that at least for one place in my home. For this um, Christmas this year, I'm going to try to make a snowflake wreath. It was so pretty. And of course, Deborah Cabasa, um, you know, been with me along with some of these other ladies for quite some time. She does some beautiful decor. I moved recently, so I know you're going to be all ready for the new year. I can't wait to see what you're going to come up with. <laughs> so, guys, so that's as far as our chat goes for now. So, yes, guys. So, like I said, you know, attainable goals, set yourself a few of those and a few stretch goals as, stretch goals as well. 
you know, just to push yourself a little bit further, you know, just to see how it goes. Because as they say, you know, you might reach for the stars and you catch the moon. So you may set it a little bit higher and you fall a little bit below and you're still in a good place. But again, don't be hard on yourself, guys. Just pace yourself. I'm giving you this information, but I'm taking it from myself too, because there are things that I want to accomplish as well. So here's one for me. <laughs> Every year I say, oh my gosh, I'm so terrible. Start exercising. Oh no, I do. I'm a gardener. As you know, that's one of the main focus of my channel. And I'm hoping to do more of those for this year. And I hope you'll join me on those. But exercise, you know, so I say I'm in the garden with a warmer month. So I do get a good workout because I'm pretty often out there busy doing this, that, and the other. But to do like regular exercise every January, I say I'm going to do it. And I may do it like for a week and then I stop or do it very sporadically. So I'm hoping that this year, you know, God willing, I'll be able to get some more exercise, exercising in. A good thing to do is to read a book. Some people like reading books. So if you like reading books, then you can go ahead and, you know, read a book. I like audiobooks or magazines. Maybe I have a short attention span. I don't know what it is, but I prefer magazines to books. One book that I do read, though, every year, it's the Bible. And I try to read the Bible through every year, you know, from, I don't do it chronologically, though. I've done that in the past. But in recent years, I've just read from cover to cover because it's just easier for me to just know exactly where I am and just keep going along with it. And if you can't, you know, maybe do the whole Bible in a year, maybe you can pledge to do maybe like a verse per day, every day, do one verse every day, or do a chapter every day, or say do the book of Psalms for the year, you know, just something like that. But there are different books, of course, like I said, that's my favorite one, and um, definitely recommend it, even the audio books. Of course, even the audio Bible, that helps me a lot. Sometimes I'm working, and I can be listening to it, and I'll glance over to see a name or a place or something sometimes, you know, just for, you know, to have a good idea of it. The next thing is to get over the blues is self-care. A lot of self-care, guys. You know, I would say like at this time of the year, for those of us who are in a colder place, it's always the skin, right, guys? I'm telling you that ashy skin. That's me right there, especially, you know, because you're wearing socks most of the times, you know, to go out or stockings or whatever. It tends to dry out your skin a lot. So it's always good to go and get a pedicure. If you can't, you know, get to go and have someone do your pedicure, then you can always do it yourself. You know, get a little foot spa and just soak your feet in there, you know, do some exfoliation, get your nails done and all of that. And guys, you'd be surprised sometimes just something as simple as that, you know, taking care of yourself that way. It makes such a big difference. I'm going to get mine done tomorrow and um, we'll see how that goes. So let me take a look at the chat somewhere. She says, thanks for the wonderful compliments. Oh, let me go a little bit further. She said, the Rekabasa says she loved doing exercises. I know I feel so bad when you're doing yours. I'm just like, I really need to do it, Deborah. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> I'm going to try. I'm going to have my husband kind of like help me too and my kids because my younger son, um, he is definitely, in, he's an exercise buff. He really is. So I'm going to try to get him in on that with me. So he's kind of going to push me to do it. Like when you tell someone you trust, you kind of like, you know, they're checking on you. They're like, okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to get him involved and the other members of my family, my older son and my husband as well. So yes, Deborah, I know that you love those um, exercises and you do them so very well. So hats mm -hmm. off to you, my dear. And now Pretty Thing says, thanks for the wonderful compliments. I just moved back home and I'm looking forward to decorating my space. It's ready for, a, it'll be ready in a few weeks. Okay, so we're looking, we'll, we'll be looking forward to that. So guys, remember to check her out. And Johnson Home Decor says, that's me too. Always start the exercise and stop. Yes, ma'am, it is not easy. <laughs> Deborah, I know it's easy for you because you do it all the time, but for the rest of us, it's kind of like that hurdle to get over and just, because once you, you do it and you start to become a habit, then, you know, it's it's easier for you. So I'm going to have to start doing that. So let me see. And let's see. There was this. Oh, yes. My skin suffers a lot through the winter. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. One of my labs, one of my little um, neighbors down the street, she actually does like body butters. So I'm going to go ahead and show them to you. It's not going to be sponsored or anything. I'm just trying to help her with her product. So as long as she's still doing them, I'm going to ask her and I'll probably present them to you on one of the lives that we have here. So Johnson Home Decor Bundell says, I use coconut oil all year for my skin. And I, you're, you have glowing skin. I can see it in your videos. So do you put it on your face as well or just on your body? You can let us know because your face is always glowing, you know, and that, that's, that's, that's a blessing right there for sure. 
So the McFarlane's, Juanita McFarlane, Pastor McFarlane says, hello, Marlene and everyone. A blessed year to you all. Happy New Year to you, my dear. So glad you could join us. And Deborah says, uh, she's smiling. <laughs> Rusi says coconut oil is good. Yes, yes. Oh, she says yes on my face too. Okay. We're going to have to have a little Instagram talk about that so you can, you know, give me some advice because I really want to have nice, you know, glowing skin all through the year. I try, but you know, there's, you can always, there's always room for improvement. Of course, with age, it's kind of like, it's a little more of a challenge, but you know, because Mondale, you're younger than me, of course. So it's a little easier for you, but it can be done. We just have to get those things in place. And coconut oil, like Bruce Lee says, it is good for you. So, because some things are so chemically, you don't necessarily want those things on your skin, but I know the coconut oil will definitely be good for us. So we're talking about, you know, like self-care, you know, exercising, taking care of your, um, you know, your skin and, you know, getting that little, you know, um, going to the, getting a foot spa to do it yourself, or maybe going to the salon or whatever to have them do your feet and just get rid of all of those dead cells that come up when you wring all of the socks in the winter time. When I was in Jamaica, I had no clue <laughs> what that was because my skin was good all year through, no problem. But once I came to the, you know, a more temperate climate and I started wearing like socks in the winter, I was just like, where is this coming from? And again, as you get older, you know, those things become more obvious. So of course, um, next thing to do now, we're going to talk about planning your vacation. This is a good way to get your mind you know, in the right frame of mind, you can't do it for right now, of course, because, you know, you're just started. Some people actually do. I know people who take off the beginning of the year and that's their vacation time. But most people plan it like, you know, for Memorial Week, in the summer, in the fall, for Christmas and so on. But start planning it from now. So when you're doing that, if you feel like you're kind of having a dull moment or something for a day or two or something, just start planning your vacation, you know. Where would I want to go? What would I want to see? As you can see, I have my setup right here. And again, I show you my flower in my hair. And by the way, guys, if you go to like, you know, those faraway countries that are tropical, if you're married, you normally wear the, the flower on the left. And if you're available, you wear it on the right. So you can see where mine is right here. <laughs> so anyway, plan your vacation, whether it's a nice, warm, sunny place or somewhere. It could be up in the mountains or whatever, but start planning it from now. You know, see if you can get like good prices and all of that, make sure you get like your cancellation options in there so that if you, for because, you know, things happen in life, things pop up. So if something pops up and you have to cancel, then you know that you will be able to get your money back or, you know, maybe like most of the money that you put in as opposed to losing everything. It's always good to spend a little bit extra in the event that something happens and to say, I don't want to pay, pay for cancellation. And then something happens and all of your money just goes away like that. So definitely plan your vacation, guys, you know, figure like how you're going to pay for it. Maybe you can have some people like have a jar member Penny from Penny's Lifestyle Living. I think she had something last year where she was saving up money, you know, putting money aside. And you can maybe just use that be your jar for your, maybe like just like you're spending money. If it's just like loose change, maybe that, that jar or a container or a box or whatever it is, that could be your money for your, um, for your spending money on your vacation. If it's a cruise, like your shore excursions or whatever you wanted to do with it. Or even just to pay, you know, like for different parts of it, hotel, your ear ticket or whatever. But just start planning it now. You know, put something in place, you know. You put it on paper, you know, you think about it. You do a little bit, you know, like I said, every time you're feeling a little down or whatever. Or if you want to do it in a, when you're in a happy place, then, you know, either way would be fine. But, you know, just start doing that. So, you know, I kind of have in my mind already where we're thinking of for this year. But We'll see because, you know, we put things in place and we say, well, God, if it's wrong, correct me. And he will, you know, and just be open to it. If it doesn't work out, then you can always try something else. So, you know, the vacation is a good way to give yourself that lift. All right. Let me just make sure I'm keeping up with the chat over here. All right. So then the next thing is to stay healthy. And we talk about things like we spoke about tea earlier, like to have teas, you know, like, you know, lemon tea is good and so many other different types that they have, you know, calming teas at night, try to get enough sleep, of course. Um, you know, it's very important. So some people say exercising is very important, but now they're pushing getting enough sleep even more than exercising because they realize that if you don't get enough sleep, it leads to all kinds of problems, you know, heart problems, you know, migraines, all different kinds of stuff, you know. So, and it's like the more you don't get enough sleep is the more you don't get enough sleep, the more it becomes a habit for you then the easier it becomes. 
Um, so definitely, you know, catch up on this. If you can't do the exercise, you know, I'm just saying at least try to get enough sleep, at least eight hours per night. You know, sometimes you just have to switch things off and try to get that sleep in your medical visits. I typically do mine at the end of in, in December because I'm a December birthday baby. And um, I typically do mine just before my birthday it comes around in December. So I get all of that cleared. And I always remember, OK, this is your birthday present to yourself. Go and get a clean bill of health. You know, hopefully that's what it turns out to be. And if there is an issue, early intervention is the best key because you go early. If there's an issue, you can address it. Don't be, oh, I don't want to hear. It's better to go and hear, and then they tell you what's wrong. And you can always get treatment for it. Early intervention, you know, is always the easiest way to get something cured. You know what I mean? Penny, I just talked about you. Hi, Miss Penny. She says, hi, Marlene. Everyone just stopping in to say hi. I'm at work. I just talked about you because I said like to lift the mood sometimes, you know, like um, in January when you have that great dull time of year is to start planning your vacation. And we're talking about, you know, like how to, you know, finance it and so on. And I said that I think last year you had like a little jar that you were saving money. I remember it's a jar or something, but you were saving money in something and putting it aside. So, if it's, well, you know, if it's for your shore excursion money, if it's a cruise, you know, spending money when you're on the island or wherever you're, you know, else you're going, you know, just set money aside. So, you know, like this is going to be there and I'm not going to touch it. This is going to go towards And If money is not a challenge for you at all, then you can just, you know, do, you know, whatever you like in that regard, just go whenever you're ready and you should be good to go. And by the way, guys, if you're getting great information here, you know, be sure to give me a thumbs up so they'll, you know, go ahead and have this go out to others as well, because, most of my um, views on my lives typically come afterwards, with a few exceptions, but for the most part, that's typically how it goes. Penny says, yes, still still saving. I didn't record it this year, so you're not recording this year. Okay, but you did last year, and remember that you did an awesome job with that, guys. So get you know your medical visits going, and that should be good for you. Another thing people don't like to talk about because it's a very private thing, but it is very important, it's staying regular, and I have these right here. Apples are a good way to go. And I, just, I don't like buy a lot of organic stuff necessarily, just a few of them. And this is one, like apples, I'll get them, and those are from Walmart. As they say, an apple a day keeps a doctor away. So I would say definitely, you know, make sure you have something that has soluble fiber. Apples are good for that. And you just make sure that, you know, you're clear every day. Because when those things stay inside of your body, that's what causes diseases. It makes you sick. And then all of these other things come off of it. If you don't like apples, then I think pears would be another good um, option for apples. But make sure you're having it. You know, like in the morning, you can have an apple, have some water. And that usually gets you going. A lot of people, they maybe have like other fruits. For me, I know that that's, that works very well for me. And that's what I do. So it's very important, guys. You know, you have to, as I say, if your colon is clean, then your body will be clean. I mean, they say that like everywhere and it's really true. Because I used to wonder, why did they say an apple a day keeps a doctor away? But now I understand. You have that, you're clear. And if you don't have those toxins building up inside of your body, then that is a very good place to start. Let me see. Apples, I love prunes. Prune and prune. Okay, yeah, some people do that too. But for me, apples <laughs> always works. <laughs> Deborah Kabasi says, I love all types of fruits and vegetables. I don't eat too much meat. I am more of a pescatarian. Okay. Yes. A lot of people are going that way too. Yeah. So, because sometimes not everyone can go vegan and say, I want to avoid meats altogether. I know I couldn't do it, but if you cut back on some things, maybe no red meat or less red meat or, you know, pescatarian, as she said, just having fish dishes, you know, things like that, that goes, you know, pretty good too, or maybe vegetarian you know, you'll have like eggs and cheese and milk, or you maybe just not have dairy at all and still have your meats or whatever, but just, you know, figure out what works, what you can deal with, and then just, you know, try to adapt as you go on. So those are good things to, you know, to start for, to strive for, for the new year. And like, we're still talking about self-care guys. We talked about, you know, um, you know, having, you know, you know, a nice little spa treatment, you know, your feet, if you can afford that or whatever, just to relax and, you know, get yourself out of that mood. Because me personally, I know, because I'm, you know, this year I've pledged myself not to feel the blues in winter and I'm trying really hard right now. And things are always going to come at you because that's life. You're going this way and then something comes in out of left field or whatever, and it kind of takes you off your path a little bit. So we just have to keep going and just try because January, normally I'm telling you, it's just like, it's gray 
it's rainy or it's, you know, maybe light snow or whatever. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I need some greenery because I'm a garden person. I need to see flowers blooming and trees, you know, we have the evergreens, but it's not the same as when you have everything in full bloom. So I kind of go down in January. I'm not going to lie. So I really have to do things to, you know, pull me up. And this is why I decided to do this because I figured maybe there are other people in a similar situation, especially when I'm just taking on the decorations. I'm just like, oh my gosh, it looks so bare. What am I going to do? So guys, there you go. And another one too, in terms of self-care would be wear your perfume. This is my favorite. I love it. By Liz Clearborn. Born. Love it, love it. So, you know, because sometimes we'll save those things. Oh, for a special occasion, blah, blah, blah. You know, just put it on and you put it on and just go maybe shopping, you know, just smell really nice. You know, it helps to relax you. You'd be surprised. Sometimes you can just put it on in your house. Have a nice shirt, put your perfume on, relax, watch a nice movie, read a nice book or, you know, whatever you do to relax. And it just helps to calm you. I remember um, Mondale from Johnson, of course, says she likes Good Girl. I saw Good Girl the other day and someone actually featured it on Instagram. So I said, OK, there is Mondale's perfume that she likes but there are so many of them but you know you have your favorites that you like so a little of that you know you don't saving this and saving that for this day and that day you know use them now because like I said in a previous live my grandmother she used to have all these wonderful bed slippers and robes and dusters and all those things and she put them down for a hospital visit my grandmother never ever went to the hospital from all the days that I grew up with her when she came back from England and that was maybe like about 25 years or so that she came back and was, you know, with us first and then she built her own home and she moved there. She never ever went to the hospital, so she never used them. And then of course, you know, after she passed, people came and they asked for them and we gave them to them because we were in so much grief, we weren't even thinking about that. And um, so I'm just saying it to say that, you know, just use your things, guys. I mean, don't run everything out, but you know, you know, saving all of these things and then you just never use them and you never need to get the opportunity if you just keep putting it off and off and off. So. Another one is to check up on folks that you haven't heard from in a while. So if you, there are people that you haven't heard from in a little while, you know, just check up on them, give them a phone call and drop them on, you know, maybe a card or something, just saying hello or whatever, you know, just to check in on them. Because, you know, in the pandemic and everything, some people just kind of like withdrew and went into themselves and they never came out of it. There's some people who still are not fully in, you know, activities that they had before. So you can always reach out to them. You know, I have some people that I still need to reach out to as well myself, you know, just to check in on them. Because sometimes you're, somebody is waiting for you and you're waiting for them and we're both waiting. You know what I mean? So reach out and, and see what happens there. Next one I had was to do some more things that you weren't able to do in the pandemic. So there may be some things that you weren't able to do in the pandemic. I would say, you know, go ahead and try doing them now. You know, maybe you weren't going out as often, maybe to meet up with, you know, a friend or family or whatever for lunch or, you know, going on a trip somewhere or going to the movies or whatever it may have been. It kind of like was low key for the last two years. You can start doing those again, you know, with caution, because I'm seeing that more people are starting to wear masks again. So, I, you know, triple demic and all of those things. But people, I think, have a better handle on the whole thing now. So we feel a little bit more freer to go and move around. And, you know, I really am happy about that. So we'll see what God says and where it goes. But, you know, try, you know, and see what you can do in terms of doing those things. So always just try to, you know, keep yourself happy. And I did talk about the core before. So I just wanted to show you another good thing to do too, to help to lift your spirits. Uh, our candles, like this one here, my son got it recently. He said, mom, you have to smell this candle. And he actually bought it for the house. That was so nice of him. I, um, Because my boys, you know, they're always treating us to things, you know. And he got this. This one is mango guava. Let me tell you, matches perfectly with this, with this theme that I have going right here. Very, very tropical. And it smells so, so good. This one is, what do you call them? Studio. Is that Studio One? I think it's Studio One. It's not very, Studio B Home, pardon me. So it's ma mango guava, but of course there's so many um, companies that make candles. You have Yankee candles that I've talked about before, but you can just, you know, burn one somewhere in the house to give you that nice fragrance. And, you know, always though, make sure you don't go to sleep with your candles because that can be dangerous, but just put them up if you're going to take a nap or whatever, just to be on the safe side. So let's see what's going on in the chat here. All right, so we see the pescatarian. Yes, and we talked about that. 
So guys, how many of you at this point have basically um, taken down all of your Christmas decorations? I would love to know because we, on New Year's Day, we took everything down from, the, you know, from our yard. So all the yards, so we took everything down, but except for the icicle lights, those are still up out there. But as far as inside the home goes, we took the decorations off of the tree. So those are not on there anymore. And some of my table settings, I took them off to give it a more kind of like less Christmassy look. But there are a lot of areas in this house, like my mantle, I still have to do that. I have to sort and pack my decorations, like the coffee table. Because you'd have seen some of these videos too um, back in December, you know, decorating for Christmas and all of that. Coffee table still there, sofa table still there. I had a busy work week this week, so I didn't have a lot of time to go in and take them down. And I was kind of tired when I got home each day, just trying to do some housekeeping. So, but I'm going to get to it. I'm going to do some tonight after we finish here and then some again tomorrow to start clearing them out. So let's see. Ebra Kabasa says, my Christmas tree went down on the 6th. Okay. I Which was yesterday, right? So that was yesterday. I still have some things that I got to change, but I'll be doing that in a video for for the one that Penny is hosting, I'm, I'm one of the co-hosts. Yes, about the I think it's a refresh. I saw that. Um, I do have to let you ladies know that I'm actually trying to 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 um screw my channel a little bit more towards the garden this year and flowers because it's really the mainstay of my of my channel. So when I do join it, most likely will be maybe like my front porch or my backyard or something, but it will still be a refresh. So if I don't make the first one that's coming here, because I have some things lined up, then I'll try to make the second one. But I certainly want to participate because it's a re it's really good. You know, it's 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 great to you know get ideas on how to freshen your space and just to see what someone did so you can do it for your own. Because once the decorations come down, you know, you have to um put something up. So it's good to get suggestions from people. If you didn't celebrate Christmas, because, you know, some of my um, people that are my viewers or subscribers, they don't. If you don't celebrate Christmas, you know, just a refresh for the, you know, for the winter season to have a new look, you know, in your house. I remember when I was growing up and you can tell me, ladies, if any of your, or gentlemen, if any of your um, parents, your mothers did this, because my mother and my mother-in-law always did it. They would switch around the furniture like twice per year. I don't do it. <laughs> Everything stays in the same spot. I'll, you know, refresh maybe like with a different pillow, you know, different flowers. I change those out all the time. But in terms of like moving them around, that was a big thing in Jamaica. My mother-in-law did it because my husband told me that she does it. Um, and my mother did the same thing. They'll switch the sofa to another place. They'll put the, well, the TV always stayed the same spot because it was always a central spot in the house that all eyes went on there. But they typically would go through and, um, you know, switch stuff around in the living room, you know, put this there. By the way, does anyone know what a whatnot is? I'm going to type it in here and you can tell me if you know what a whatnot is. That's what we would call it back in Jamaica, a whatnot. So you can tell me if you know what a whatnot is. I'd love to see your description. She said, I move my furniture around in my other house. Here, I don't know how I'm going to, to do it. Well, I mean, it doesn't have to be like, maybe just switch one thing out. Because I know you said you were downsizing. So, you know, you know, just do what you can and work with what you have. You know, whatever makes you happy and gives you a slight change to your, you know, to your um, layout. You could definitely try it or just, you know, because I know you do a lot of decorating as we talked about earlier. So even just refreshing your decorations, you know, that definitely helps you as well. So um, I just want, wanted to also just pause to say I really wanted to thank you all, my viewers and subscribers, for the wonderful year that was 2022 on YouTube. Um, I'm not sure if you all saw my milestone video that I did. It was the last one that I did um, for, for last year. Um, it was the last Thursday, I think, or something like that in December. But anyway, I went over all the milestones that I hit, you know, reaching 1,000 subscribers, that I had um, 100,000 views back in November. I got a couple of sponsors on there. And all those things happened because, you know, you guys supported me and you guys were there for me. And I truly appreciate it. And I try as much as I can to be there for you guys as well. So with God's help, we just hope to be bigger and better, you know, each and every one of us to just put things in place. And that's why I'm trying to streamline my channel a little bit more so that way it can kind of help with the growth. And, you know, it's always recommended that you do, you know, kind of streamline it a little bit. Or if you just want to just do, you know, whatever you really, really like and want to present and share, there's always the place for that as well, too. So 
you know, just to stop and talk about the channel a little bit. So we're looking forward to those um, collaborations as well too this year. So we'll see what we can do. Um, let me see. Pretty hot. She says, uh, whatnot is a word some folks use to describe small pieces of decor items. Uh, kind of close. <laughs> Anybody else know? To Georgia Peaches says, and that's Drea. She says, a cabinet. Yeah, kind of like that. Um, I probably would have to, I don't know how I'd be able to show you because I don't have one here, but um, maybe I can put it in one of my videos or something. I don't know. But it's kind of like a cabinet, but it doesn't have glass. It has some like posts <laughs> and there are layers. Oh, I know what's a clothes. If you've ever heard of an edigir, I'm probably not going to spell it right. Let me put it in here. E-T-A-G-I-E-R-E. -E. I think that's how they pronounce it. An edigir. Because we had gotten one in South Florida when we had just, you know, come to this country. It was the closest thing I could find. And that's what they call it, an edigir. You know, it had glass shelves on there and it was made of like steel and they kind of like wrap some white, um, maybe like wicker or something around the post. So you have the post, four posts that are on there supported by layers of shelves, but it doesn't have any glass on any side. Usually they're made of wood in Jamaica though, for the most part, you know, the wooden ones, they'll do the nice carvings and all of that, nice posts and all of that. And then you display your stuff on there. So that's what we they we'll call it or whatnot. So you can look up for Edergeer and see if that um, comes up that way. Bruce Lee says, whatnot, that is taking me back. Goodness, that is a large cupboard <laughs> that holds clothes and other stuff. So see, you know, everybody has their own take on what a whatnot is, but that's what my mom called it. So I'm going to go do some research. Pretty home, um, pretty thing says, I learn something new every day. Now I know. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Go ahead and take a look and take a look at energy or two and you'll see because you're, you're one of our decor guys, so uh, um, ladies. So of course, you know. Next thing is to take up a new hobby. Yes, 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 a new hobby. Or just strengthen one that you've been learning. And for my decorating ladies, I'm kind of pushing it a little bit. Like I said, the gardening thing. Some of you, I know you do do gardening. But you can just start off small, you know, like with some bulbs, maybe like for spring, like glad, gladiolus and some easy, one, um, that are easy ones that are out there. And just plant some of those. You don't have to do a lot with them. Just put them there, water them maybe like twice a week. And they'll do their own thing when they dry and you just cut them back and they come back the next year. And that's all you have to do. Or just try containers, you know, put them in a large container. You know, you can watch some of my container videos or just regular flower videos. And it's really easy. Just get your container, your soil. You know, you put them in, you water them, put a little mulch on the top, water that. And you're pretty much good to go. But, you know, like with everything else, you know, you do your research and you learn and if you have that desire for it, it will come to you yeah, as time goes back. Because like I explain all the time, even though, you know, I do a lot of gardening and my garden, you know, looks pretty nice for the most part. I did not know a lot about flowers that grow where I am because I'm in the southern United States. I knew about tropical flowers and I learned about flowers in school as well, too. So that background was there. Yes. But I had to learn about, you know, leaves changing colors that's only something that I saw in the movies or read about, about bulbs. We didn't have bulbs there, not really, maybe like one or two types, but we didn't have like bulbs and, you know, all the other things that go down and come back up and daffodils and all of those things. We never had them. So I had to learn. The soil there was very different. It's different than where I am now. It's kind of clay over here. So I would just dig a hole in the ground, you know, back in Jamaica and just you know, just plant my flowers, plant them from the seed and they will come up and last forever and ever, <laughs> you know, if they're perennials or if there's ones where they dry down and then they die, you put some new ones in or whatever. I didn't know anything that you have to buy soil to put in the ground. I was like, I have to buy soil, what? Because I tried it the very first year we got this house and I plant them in the ground, it's very clay and they last maybe like for about three months and they died. I said, oh my goodness, I need to do some research. And so I started doing my research and then one thing led to another and here we are guys. So I'm pushing the garden, like I said, but you know, each to his own, but it's, it's, it's worth trying it. I mean, most people they take a plant, they're going to kill one or two. It happens, it happens to everyone. So some things were just not meant for where they are. Maybe watering, maybe it could be um, not enough light, too much light, just various things, but you learn by trial and error. Of course, there's always sewing. That's something that I probably need to do some more of myself. You could maybe take up knitting. We have people who do um, quilting. The men sometimes, or even women, they may take up a hobby of building bird, bird houses. That's a new one because I know someone who they just maybe build one or two and they came out so good. 
that people wanted more and more of them. Then they started selling them, you know? So you just never know. Your hobby could become your sidekick. I mean, your side hustle, pardon me. So, you know, it could be building bird houses. Some people may taking up a hobby, maybe something like taking up Wordle. That's a new thing that's out there a lot these days. And that's not for everyone, but there are a lot of people who like Wordle. It's, you know, quite popular right now, you know, but that's something that you can do to it gets your mind to work. And as they say, it keeps you younger. You know, when your mind is actively doing things, it lifts your spirit, like we said, you know, put you in a better frame of mind. But also it helps to keep you young. It helps to keep, keep your brain going. It keeps away, you know, things like Alzheimer's, dementia, Parkinson's, all of those things, because they realize that, no, it's a lack of oxygen, too much sugar and all kinds of stuff that's going on in those cells up there. So when you keep active and doing different things, then it actually helps, you know, to keep you young, to keep your mind fresh and all of that. So let me see. Deborah says, I love all the plants in my apartment. And, and that's it too, you know, Deborah or anyone else. Two Georgia peaches, you know, I know that you are in an apartment. Um, you know, you don't have to have flowers like in a flower bed outside. You can just get some containers and put them. If you have a balcony, you can put them on the balcony. If it's in a sun, if it's a sunny balcony, you want to get plants that like sun. If your balcony is shaded most of the day, you can get shade type plants. And you go to the store, they'll show you. They have the shade ones in one section, the sunny ones in another section. So you can just get them. Or if you don't even have a balcony where your apartment is, you can just get some plants for inside your house or some ones that are very easy to care for. So you can even try with those, but that's your new hobby, you know, something different to do. And they help a lot of them, they help to clean the air inside your house too. So you have them in your house and that's the only plants that you have. Then you're doing yourself a good measure health-wise because they help to purify the air. And there are a couple of those too that are like that. I may do a video on that too, you know, like easy to grow house plants or possibly plant house plants that help to um to purify the air in your home. So, you know, so like I said, you know, take up, you know, possibly some new hobbies and see how that goes. The next thing with that, too, is to find support groups, of course, good support groups. So let's say you took up, um, you know, maybe sewing or quilting or something like that. They have support groups in different places. It may be on Facebook or, you know, other places that they have. And you can always try to join those groups and you exchange ideas and you'd be surprised and you, know, you learn something new every day. Um, I'm in a giant a gardening one and I'm also in a um, table setting one and they have some really, really nice ideas sometimes. I don't always have a lot of time because, you know, YouTube, it does take up a good amount of um, your spare time sometimes. So I don't always have a lot of time to dedicate, you know, like to be diligent on it. But every now and then I'll pop up in there and just take a look and see what they have. And, you know, they help to encourage you and, you know, you know you know, answer questions that you might have sometimes about things, or sometimes you may help someone by answering questions that they may have. So, you know, get a good support group going, make sure it's, you know, legit. And then you just go along with them and see how you can mutually um, help each other out there. So for my fellow gardeners, if you are having a garden, you may want to start planning what you're going to do this year. You know, and even just by your window in your kitchen, you probably just put some herbs there, like, you know, certain herbs that like, um, or okay with not too much sun, like partial sun or something. Because they sometimes you'll go in Walmart, because I see them sometimes, or Publix, and they'll just have some little container ones that you can plant, you know, like thyme, rosemary, basil, but make sure it's one that doesn't like a lot of sun. If your window isn't in a sunny area, you can put those on there. And that could be your little thing, you know, little thing that you're doing there as a start for the year. And of course, the good thing is that you reap the benefit of going and you can harvest them whenever you like, and you can use them in your home. So let's see, Bruce says, yes, that is a good one. Exercise your mind, absolutely, yes. And Deborah Cabasa says, I have 12 tropical plants, big and small. That is wonderful. You gotta show us them some of the time, Deborah. Let's see those flowers that you got. You know, I know you're decorating, you know, other stuff, but we'd certainly love to see what you have in one of your videos there. And another one is maybe you can take up cooking if you're not like someone who cooks a lot um, or, you know, you're not, you know, you're not you're like that skilled in certain dishes. You know, YouTube is here for all of us. You can go on and learn some new recipes, try something different, maybe another type of food. Let's say maybe you never tried to cook maybe like Mexican food. You could probably try to cook some Mexican food dishes and, you know, see how those go and try with them. Um, you can also maybe try like Italian dishes if you've never done those. Maybe you've never tried cooking Jamaican food before. You can start cooking Jamaican food and all of that kind of thing. So there are just different things that you can do. 
All right. So, um, so we did have that collaboration coming up um, soon about the refresh. We'll have to take a look to get the information on that. But like I said, I'm going to try to maybe jump in a few of those. I'm probably going to do my collaborations more likely maybe like in March, maybe mid-March or so when the spring is about to come around. So I can maybe do like some things for our front porch, you know, to refresh because everybody could join in that one or maybe something for your front door or something like that. So we'll be doing that kind of a thing there. And of course, um, for those of you um, who don't follow me on Instagram, I always put that out a little bit when I can too. It's at Marlene's How To's because sometimes you'll get additional information than what you may see on my channel. So that's there. So it's the same as my channel name, Marlene's How To's. So you can always go there and follow along. And again, all these ladies that are on here, these wonderful creators. Oh, I did not see you, Miss Emma. She says, hello, everyone. I didn't see that you had come on here. So welcome, welcome, welcome. She's another fellow creator. So, you know, we do try to support each other as much as we can in terms of, you know, just seeing what's going on with each other. Of course, you can't watch every video, but every now and then, you know, take a look. And if you, so sometimes the notifications, guys, you know how it goes. Sometimes the notifications, whatever reason, they don't come over. So if you haven't heard from one of your fellow creators that you really like, you know, in a while, you can always go and just go to their channel, you know, type it in. It's so easy to find people. You know, YouTube has been making some pages. I know sometimes people feel like YouTube is against me, et cetera, et cetera. But I really do see where they are trying to do things to help. We kind of have to follow some of the things that they would want us to do to kind of help us along the way. But it's so easy now to find people on the just type in their channel name. And it pops up and you can see if somebody has a similar name, they'll give you like, you know, different channels that have the same name. But it's so much easier, you know, to find um, to find people on there nowadays. So you can always go check them out because, like I said, you could have tapped notification. You tap the bell twice. It says all. And sometimes you still do not get the recommendations. And they're there making videos. But for whatever reason, it doesn't send them over to you. Sometimes it could be a case because you've been watching a certain type of videos over the last maybe two weeks or so. They figure, oh, you know, he or she may not want to see this one, so they don't send it to you. So, you know, check up on your guys every now and then and see how they're doing. So, so basically, um, those are the things that we were looking at in terms of, um, you know, getting your over the winter blues. I'd love to see, you know, what you guys do as well, too, to get over it. I'd really love to hear because we're all in this together. You know, there's always the after Christmas thing where you just kind of like feel, you know, like you're kind of going down a little bit and you just want to you know, get that lift and that refreshed, re refresh. So it helps. So what I'm going to do in the meantime, while you guys, you know, give me um, any ideas as to what you have that can help us, I'm just going to do a quick recap because, um, you know, we always start off with less people. And as the evening builds, you know, we get more people coming on and off. And you may have missed a couple of good points here and there. So I'm just going to go ahead and go over those with you. So we had said to refresh and decorate your space. And as far as your Christmas decor goes, if you haven't done everything yet, um, some people may have because you're really quick on it. Because I know some people on the 26th, everything is coming. I was like, oh, my goodness. I'm going to keep it at least until New Year up. you know. And I will turn the lights on, icicle lights, everything comes on. But after New Year's Day, then that's it. We're finished with it. But um, just check through your stuff. You know, Try to pack them in a way where you know what is where. You, know, you put your labels on. If there's stuff you wanted to donate, you can donate them, get a tax write off right there, guys. So that's a plus to it, as well as to help someone for next year. Um, also, if there's some of them that you need to trash, because some of them sometimes, you know, maybe from the dollar store or, you know, they have kind of like not very waterproof on their outside, they get wet, they get soaked, whatever, you know, just trash them. If you don't want them to stick around and start getting mold and stuff like that on there, because that can happen too. So, you know, just see what you need to keep, what you want to donate, and what you want to just trash those and have them go out. Then we talked about freshening up your home and just doing it in different different areas, different stages, um, because sometimes it can feel overwhelming, just like, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know. But just, you know, pace yourself, you know, just do a little at a time. You might start off with maybe your living room first, then maybe you do your bedroom next, and maybe you do your bathroom next or your powder room or whatever, but, you know, just pace yourself, do a little bit at a time, and before you know it, you'll see that you've Finish refreshing and decorating your entire home. The Deborah says that is happening to me. So I didn't get a notification when you were coming live, but I knew you were going to be live because I saw that you posted on Instagram. Yes, and that's what I'm saying because, and it's just an algorithm thing, you know. I mean, it's a large platform, there's a lot going on on there. So, you know, they just basically kind of pigeonhole things sometimes in a sense. 
and they go with what they think you like and they won't necessarily show you everything because they can't show us everything to be honest. You know, if you have multiple subscribers, which we all do, they can't show you like all day because you'd be getting notifications all day, you know, and you have things to do, you have a life to lead. So, you know, like I said, just check your people out, you know, if you haven't heard from them in a while. And sometimes through the community board will tell you because, you know, that's a good way for us to update. I think once you have 500 um, subscribers, then you can um, post on the community board and just give people an update. Because sometimes people have because we have something happening in our family right now, which I'll share on a video next week. But you maybe have things going on and it actually prevents you from doing videos. I'll still be doing my videos, but some people, depending on what it is, they're just in a state where they just can't even do that at that point. And they'll tell you one day and you're like, OK, you know, they're on a break and I understand that. So I kind of know what to expect. But other than that, you know, just go in and you check your people out and just see what's going on with them. But like I was saying, you know, just go ahead and, you know, decorate in different areas a little at a time and see where you end up with that. And then it's about your New Year's resolution. Some people hate that work because they say, you know, we make the resolutions and we break them very shortly after. But I feel like it's better to try, you know, just put a little effort out there and see. You reach for the stars, you catch the moon. So, you know, you can put attainable goals, things that you figure you might. Be. Let's say you maybe have like 400 subscribers right now. You say, you know what, my goal for this year is to reach 500 and surpass it. And you can say, maybe, you know, I can revise it maybe at six months. You say, you know what, I got to 500. Let me see if I can get to 600. Maybe you have 50 subscribers and you say, you know what, for this year, I want to get to 100. You get to 100 maybe in three months and you say, you know what, let's try for 500. Let's try for 1,000. Let's try for 2,000 or whatever the case may be. So, you know, you have attainable goals and then you have stretch goals that you take a little bit further along. Then we talked about um, exercising, about, you know, reading a book. And as I was saying, you know, the Bible is such a, you know, um, important book for me. You know, I try to read it through every year from cover to cover. If you can't maybe go through that within a year, you can maybe try to say do like maybe a chapter per day or maybe a, even a verse per day, you know, just something like that. And while I'm on it here, I just wanted to read this um, this verse because it's, you know, it's, um, it's a very encourage, encouraging one and people use it quite a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it up here. But this is a good one to bear in mind um, when you are starting out the new year. And it's actually from Jeremiah 29, verse 11. And it says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a future, plans to give you a hope and a future. So that's Jeremiah 29, verse 11. So that's a good one to bear in mind, a good way to start the year, you know, just to bear in mind that, you know, God really wants the best thing for us, but he also wants us. And of course, he's going to correct things the way that he wants his plan to go. But still, you know, you put some plans in place and just ask for guidance. And if you're getting red flags, you may need to just drop it. Well, I would say drop it if you're getting red flags. Don't ignore them. But, you know, just keep going. and know that he has the best plans in place for you. We just have to trust and believe, as they say, and keep going. So, so that's as far as reading a book. And the audible books are good, too. You know, it helps you to, because, you know, some of them, because even like the Bible, we use the Gideon Bible app. And that's a plug for the Gideons International. But we have the app and you can, it, it's in so many different languages. You know, we have, um, I can't remember, is it like 200? But there are many different, so you have different languages and dialects that you can actually, you know, choose from there. So you're able to do all of that and um, you can listen to it while you're working or you're cooking or whatever. Oh, and you can listen to it. My husband says 1200. Well, that's a big difference. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so they have 1200 different dialects. So, you know, people can translate in their own dialect. So it goes all over the world. And it's still, you know, the Bible is still the best, um, the most sold book every year. And it has been that way for quite some time. Yeah, so audible books are good. You, know, you can play them while you're driving. You can do it while you're cooking, you know, while you're just relaxing, you know. And that's a good way as well to lift your mood. We talked about self-clear, about using some of the stuff that you have. Like I said, you know, you have your nice perfumes. This is one of my favorite ones here by Liz Clairborne Realities. You know, just spray them around. Sometimes you may just be at home, have a shower, just put some on. It smells so nice. You feel so good, so relaxed. And just lift your spirit, guys. You know, just as I say, don't worry. I say stay happy, so try. You may get pulled back a little bit, but just keep going. You know, get your you get your um, pedicure done, whether you're doing it yourself or you're going to go to the salon to get it done there. You know, go ahead and get that done so that way, because, you know, the winter tends to be kind of rough, especially on your feet in socks all the time. 
So, you know, get that done, get a nice little foot spa, whether you're having it done yourself or get it done, depending on what you are able to do. But, you know, that's a good thing to do for yourself. Get some calming music, you know, when you take some time for yourself. Or if you want to pump it up, you know, like you're cleaning, like John's the home decor, Tamika isn't on here right now, but they do a lot of cleaning on their, their channels. And um, they always have that lively music. So like you're cleaning, of course, you know, you want to get that energy and keep going. So put some lively music on, maybe some island music, some reggae music, some, you know, calypso or whatever you like. Just, you know, keep it going and just, you know. So there are different music for different reasons. But, you know, if you're feeling down, you know, having the winter blues or whatever, you know, try to do something to lift your spirit. Don't stay, stay there. And sometimes some people, it's so bad. They call it, what is it, seasonal it's called SAD, which is an interesting acronym, but um, let me see if I can find it on my phone here. But I know it's called SAD. It's seasonal something. But I mean, they have it so bad that they actually have to be, um, uh, let me try putting it in all caps and see if that works for me. I don't know. All of a sudden I can't type. Hmm, it's not coming up the way I wanted to. Um, but it's some kind of a seasonal um, depression that people go under, like, you know, they're having the blues so bad that, um, okay, here it is. It says seasonal affective disorder. That's what it's called. And so people they get it so bad in the winter because, you know, you have less daylight coming through and daylight, sunlight is very important. So that's why walking is sometimes good, you know, just go outside the house and just go for a walk, you know, get some sun, you know, depending on where you are, hopefully you could get to do it. But the sunlight is good for you. But because of all of those, the days are shorter. It gets dark pretty quickly. You know, um, people really get depressed. They get really sad. I mean, I get a little blue, like I said, after Christmas. And I have to do things to uplift myself. But some people, they get it really, really bad. They may go into mild depression or sometimes very deep depression. And they have to, you know, go to the um, to get treatment for it because it's really bad. They say melatonin helps too because that's linked in some ways to sunlight. So some people take that any kind of lift their spirit as well too but you know if you're really getting to a point where it's really really bad i would say there's nothing wrong with getting professional help sometimes people figure that if you're having like you know emotional problems you know people hide and they don't talk about it they don't even tell their family it could be in the same house with someone and they're going through all of this and they don't even share it with you and then you know something bad happens and you know it's a big surprise so you know it's good to check in on people even people who live with you to make sure that they're doing okay that they're all right and um, like I said, you know, if you're going through it yourself, then, you know, please be sure that you, you know, there has to be someone you can trust. And it really needs to be someone that you can trust. If there's someone that you're not so sure they may go and tell your business, then you can always seek professional help there. You know, if you can't afford it, there are people who offer these services. You don't have to pay depending on sometimes the type of health health coverage that you have or maybe through your company that you work for. You know, there are people that can help you with that. So um, you can always, you know, go ahead and um, see that kind of a help. And there are people there to help. So I would say if it ever gets to that point, def definitely don't sit on it, you know, do something about it. Because again, we only have one life to live. So we always want to make sure that we're doing the best that we can do to help ourselves and to move on to the next level. Let me see. Okay, Deborah says my phone is almost dead. I have to put it to recharge, so I'm going to call it a night. Okay, my dear, thank you so much for stopping by. We certainly appreciate you so much. Be sure to give me a like if you haven't on the way out, if you haven't gone already. So, yes, guys, so if that is happening to you, like I said, you know, be sure to reach out and see, you know, if you can get some help if that is happening to you. And, you know, get some light inside the house, too. That helps, um, you know, to lift your mood as well. And we had talked about those of you who came on, if you're just coming on, um, taking up a new hobby, sewing, gardening, knitting, you know, playing wordle, you know, building birdhouses, you know, some men do that sometimes or women as well, too. There's quilting, you know, there's just so many different things that you can do. Gardening, you know, getting that in place. You can watch some of my videos to get some tips on that. Like I said, I'll be doing a lot more of those for this year. So I hope that you'll stay tuned for those. It could be cooking dishes, you know, from different places. Let's say you always eat Jamaican food. I eat a lot of Jamaican food because we're from Jamaica. My husband and I are from Jamaica. He's, he's Jamaican Chinese or mostly um, Chinese, but he has a little bit of, um, you know, um, African-American or black, as we say back home in him as well, too. But, you know, we eat a lot of Jamaican food. But of course, maybe you, you always eat Jamaican food or you always eat Mexican food. or You always eat Italian food. Try to learn to cook, you know, something from a different country. It could be maybe you want to try like Thai food 
you've never had Thai food before, maybe you might like it, you know. Look up some recipes, try something different. You'd be surprised or just, you know, doing something as simple as that can lift your mood. You know, YouTube has so many, you know, how-to videos on how to cook different dishes. So you can always go on and check them out and see what they have there and just, you know, start cooking some different things. And then once you start feeling comfortable, then you can always start sharing them with other people, you know, if they're, you know, okay taking that from you. So, you know, that's something to consider. If you've never had a YouTube channel before, some people are on TikTok, I'm not, but maybe you could start a TikTok channel, maybe with just something that's inspirational and you can do that there. Or maybe you can um, do, um, you know, like, like I said, a YouTube channel, just do something that you know, something, you know, a fair enough information about, and you can share it with people. And they have so many videos out there, like how to start your own YouTube channel. So you could do your research first, you know, think about it, see if it's what you want to do. It doesn't have to be, say, you have to start in January. Maybe you could start, you know, in February, in March, maybe in the second half of the year, you do your research first and then you jump in whenever you're ready. You know, but there's so many different things that we can do, guys. So, you know, I really hope that it's helped you guys out a lot. It always helps me when I share with you because we both, you know, we share information with each other. So I always find it so very useful. And of course, if you have never subscribed, if it's your first time here on my channel, I'm Marlene. This is Marlene's How To's, my home and garden channel. I do a lot of gardening and some decorating. I do collabs with some of these wonderful ladies that are in the chat sometimes. Um, so, you know, be sure to check them out. You can also do a um, review my review, uh, watch my video of review of 2022 to see some of the things that happened and a perspective of where I'm looking to head for this year. And guys, I'm here for you. If you need anything, you can always reach me on Instagram at Marlene's How To's if you want to connect me, you know, directly. And this is a family affair, as I always say, my husband and my sons, you know, they're such a big part of this. They help me out so much. They're so patient with me. If you watch my um, year in review video, you'll see that I put a part where I had some bloopers on there. And I only put two guys, but there are so many. <laughs> it's like, take 20. I'm just like, oh my gosh, am I really saying it again? So a tr that trick that I found out last year, which I don't have that many anymore, but like the first two years, oh my goodness. But like last year is kind of like, just keep going. You know, you mess up, just keep going. Don't say I'm going to start and start to do it all over again. Just keep when you can always go on your phone and just trim it off and just use from where you want to get it over to whatever editing tool you're using. Unless you're doing everything straight from a video on your phone and it's going to be a little bit different. But just keep going because otherwise it's going to be take, take. And then when you take it so many times, it's just kind of like all of a sudden you start to mess up on your words and you kind of get frustrated and all of that. So I found that that works for me. You know, just keep going. Sometimes, depending on what it is, I may just start again, but at least it doesn't have to be as many. So, you know, hopefully by take five. <laughs> I get it. So let's see. Um, John Sombicor says, I love having these chats with everyone. Absolutely. I love them. I really do. To Georgia Peachy says, we're really looking forward to those. Yes. John Sombicor says, yes, it's a family affair. Oh, and for sure. Um, Mr. Dexter over there. Absolutely. I see him all the time. Mondale, you had him working so hard taking down the Christmas decorations. I did not see you, ma'am. <laughs> That last one that I watched, it was just all Dexter the whole way. I'm just like, you know, you got a good husband there, as do I, you know. And many of you ladies out there that watch my channel. And, you know, it's something to be thankful to God for. Don't take it lightly and pray, pray. And if you haven't met the right one yet, he's out there somewhere. God's going to bring him when it, the time is right and he'll come on over. As I say to people, when you go looking for it too much, that is typically when it doesn't happen or you end up with the wrong people. So, you know, just live your life, be happy, go from day to day. And when the time is right, you'll be surprised when you least expect it. That's when the right one comes along. So, yeah, for some people it works out, you know, in a less organic way. But I find that most success stories in that arena are typically the ones that you just allow things to unfold. Sometimes people are like, listen, I'm just finished with this, I'm done. And when you think you're done, that's when God says, well, I'm ready. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so Bruce, Lee says, Bruce Lee says, hats off to Mr. Dexter. Dexter, absolutely. And hats off to my husband, Mark. I appreciate you so much. And my boys, my two sons. John Somers says, I wasn't feeling well and I hate the cold. So I will not be out in it. No problem. No worries. You do, all, you do a lot inside, man. There's no shame in it. <laughs> So don't take it that way. I'm just saying that he is really, really helpful and that, you know, we appreciate, you know, 
um, you know, good working family members, hardworking families that help us, you know, the different things that we have to do. So guys, I thank you so much for joining me. I can't do this every week like I did say last year, but every now and then I will do them and I'll try to put it either in the community tab or if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that I'm going to be doing a live. I will try to give you at least the day before notice so you have some time for it. And in, like I said, in my channel, I'll be mostly be doing like gardening for this year to kind of like stream on a little bit more, but I will still try to do the collabs in that kind of a way. But the lives, the lives are free stars, whatever is topical, whatever is seasonal, whatever is going on out there, you know, you know, within reason, of course, that's what we're going to talk about on here. Things that I figure you may want to know that I want to know more about it, that we can share information together. So that's pretty much what it's going to be. So, guys, I appreciate you all so much. I love you lots and lots and lots. And I hope to keep journeying with you through this year that is 2023. And just keep looking out for my videos, guys. They will be coming. I'm going to try to do at least one per week and see how that goes. And again, I'm going to just close that. Let me see. Um, oh, so um, Miss McFarlane, I see you back there because I wanted to give a little shout out to your um to your to your channel. She has an inspirational channel. And I'll tell you right now, if you're used to that kind of blessed quietness, that's not what you're gonna find there. They are Bible believing. They are very much in depth in the word. They studied a lot and they are very, very lively. Um, so they are, let me put it in here. So they have services on Saturdays and an excellent Bible study on Wednesday nights. And of course, we can't always make every single one of those. Let me put it on here. Rock off. No, I can't type all of a sudden. Okay. And that's a good way to start the year too. You know, if you haven't been um like getting your good inspiration in, whether you're going into the building or you're just watching it virtually, then um Rock of Faith Deliverance Temple. So guys, you can make a note of it and check them out. That is the, um, she's one of the pastors there, her and her husband, and they, they do an excellent job, guys, to encourage people and lift you up. And, you know, they're going to give you the truth. They're going to tell you, you know, what is true. Sometimes it may be things that you ne not necessarily want to hear, but it's something that is right for you. And they're a happy, lively bunch, and that definitely goes a long way, guys. So Give them a chance, check them out, you know, see what you um, what you got there. So Mr. Mark and Dexter are our collab partners every day, all, every day, all day, man. I'm telling you, I love it. <laughs> so guys, thanks again for joining me. I wish you all the best for the new year and we'll be there for each other as much as we can. And if you came in late or you missed a part of it, you can always go back afterwards and watch replay. I did try to set it. We did try to set it, my husband and I, so you can see the comments as you go through. So you can always check it out when you get off of here or whenever you have the time, because it's always going to be there. You can even go and watch some of the older ones, do older videos, my year in review that I did last week of, you know, the wonderful 2022 year that it was. So all of that is there for you guys. And like I said, sometimes you may not get notified. So check up on your people every now and then, because the algorithm cannot send you every notification for everyone that you subscribe to. So we kind of have to give the algorithm a little break sometimes, you know, and just try to do our little part of our um, the legwork too. So have a wonderful evening, guys. Enjoy your dinner. I'm going to have some Jamaican chicken soup and I'm looking forward to it. Maybe one day we'll show you, um, you know, how we do um, that recipe, but we'll see how it goes. So take care, guys. Love you lots and lots and lots and have a wonderful rest of the weekend and a great week for next week. See you guys in the next live and the next video, okay? Take care and I will see you then. She says, we're happy to be here. Keep the content coming. Absolutely. Take care, my dear. Bye.